Cryo sleep is not about sleeping, it's about time management. The goal is not rest, it's making Universe wait while you don't. Today, the most realistic reason people imagine cryo sleep is not interstellar travel at all, it's medicine. If a treatment is 10 or 20 years away, the fantasy isn't immortality, it's pause. Slow metabolism, slow damage, and wake up when technology catches up. In spaceflight fiction, the same logic applies, turning decade-long journeys into brief subjective moments while conserving food, oxygen, fuel, and something just as scarce, willpower. Boredom is a resource problem too. Biology already knows how to do this, at least in pieces. Bayers suppress metabolism by more than half without eating or losing muscle. Frogs and insects survive freezing by protecting their cells from ice damage. Many mammals enter torpor states where heart rate, breathing, and cellular activity drop to a fraction of normal. None of these are true off switches, but they prove that complex organisms can safely run in low power mode. Modern medicine is beginning to borrow these tricks. Therapeutic hypothermia is already used to protect the brain after cardiac arrest. Researchers are exploring pharmacological metabolic suppression to reduce oxygen demand during trauma and surgery. NASA and the Department of Defense have both funded work on induced torpor for long duration missions, not to stop biology but to slow it in controlled, reversible ways. True cryosleep, full metabolic suppression without damage, remains unsolved. Cells do not like ice. Chemistry does not like being paused, and restarting complex systems is harder than stopping them. But progress does not require perfection. Even cutting metabolism by 80 or 90 percent would radically change medicine and space travel. Cryosleep doesn't let you outrun distance, it lets you outweigh it. And sometimes the most powerful technology is not faster engines or better medicines, it's the ability to arrive after the future is ready for you. <laughs>